Well, we're mentioning it um, it's crazy. today, actually. Like, I think it, initially, it, if it was cheap enough, it would become a you know an interesting thing. People would be like, oh wow, that's really cool. I'm going to buy mm. that product because it's got this crazy. It's got this. And it'll be just a there. tiny little yeah. screen to begin with. Yeah, it'll be nothing. And then they'll put a game in there, and then they'll be like, oh cool, it's a game. I can play it. Well, like uh, an example is you know you you're eating your cereal or you're, yeah. you're drinking a bottle of coke, and you're like, oh, there's a cool, there's a game on there. Yeah, well, like, imagine the back of the cereal. Like, game. They have games and stuff. And imagine just yeah. having the back of the cereal when something cool. It's like. We just got the i well one of our roommates just got the iPad. He's like messing around with that. Imagine just a screen where you could like see some cool stuff. You're like, oh, that's awesome. But then beyond that, they'll be like, oh, I can I can gather more data about our consumers on here, yeah. and that's what it'll be. You could have a live about. Twitter feed about the product right there. That'd be pretty cool. Imagine going into the store, looking at wheat bix, looking at corn flakes, looking at uh, cocoa pops yeah. and all of that. Seeing a live Twitter feed about what people are saying about cocoa pops and all of that right now. Well, see, I don't think it'll be. They they won't care too much about bringing data to the device will be more about collecting oh, it from the consumer. Well, I think we were saying before about how computer chips are going to be internet connected always, that I, I wouldn't put it yeah. past it. But see, if you were like, if you were Maybe. Coke, and if, you were, if you were Coke and you invested putting one of their screens on your bottles, mm. you wouldn't want to give the consumer more information. You want to try and give them something enough and then sell them more. Yeah, true. No, you want them to, be, you want to gain more information. Like you want their GPS location. Oh. You want what they're thinking, how they thought this was, you know, you want more and more input from the consumer because then you get yeah, more true. data back about them do. and then you know how to sell to them more effectively. Okay, that makes a lot more sense, yeah, yeah to actually get feedback from the consumer. Think about like, you know... It, but that won't be it to begin with. Like game mechanisms and stuff trying to get yeah. information. Yeah, but to actually do buttons and stuff, that's another whole issue that, I mean, these screens, you can oh, just put it... Well, it, well, no, it's just a basic oh, screen okay. at the beginning. Like, I mean, to begin with, like, eventually, like, you're definitely right, but in the in the thing beforehand, it's just going to be a screen on there with probably like a little memory chip or whatever that plays the same loop over and over again. Yeah. Uh, it's the same thing like internet connected so that, stuff, it wouldn't do that. So I think that'll, be, that'll just be gimmicky though. It will be. It'll be like, oh my god, I'm going to buy this beer because it's got yeah, that. Yeah, because it's got that. Yeah. But then once they do actually have inputs and they can send yeah. that information back, then they'll be like, oh my god, this is yeah, a massive resource. We well, can so find out be... so much about our consumers yeah. and just sell to them so effectively. It'll probably oh. be 20 years for that, I'm guessing, for touchscreen stuff. <laughs> No, you know, I think every well, because so no, no, I think 10 years ago, 21 inch CRT flat screen. Oh, yeah, that was CRT, that was not yep. LCD. So, well, yeah, okay, 10 years from now, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna say 10. 10 years, yeah, I could go with that. That's the thing, every every estimate you make with all this shit, it's usually really go half, yeah, go half of what you think originally will be because very fast. Like, I've made es estimates before and they've, they've occurred like a lot know, quicker, <laughs> yeah, in half the time, and it tends to happen, yeah. Oh, go on. What have you got? Oh, okay. This is a long one. It's going to take a lot to kind of get out there. Um, it's a Wired magazine article. Um, and they're basically talking about how the internet is rewiring our brains. Like, obviously, we're doing that with any content we consume, with, re with really any information we consume through our, you know, different senses, mostly mm -hmm. our eyes. Like, that's where most of the yeah. shit comes through. Um, but there was this uh, UCLA professor of psychiatry named Gary Small, and what he did is he, is he started with six volunteers. Um, he took three people who were experienced web surfers, and then three people who weren't, they were just novices. Um, and what he did is he gave them goggles and told them to actually search for um, different U uh, not YouTube, uh, different Google uh, searches. And at the same time, while they're doing that, he did MRI scans on them. Cool. And what he found was the there was actually far more brain activity in the experienced internet surface than there was in the novices. Right. When they're actually browsing the information on, yeah. on this stuff. Um, that makes sense. Yes. But then when he just gave them you know standard text to read, um, all of them had the same brain activity. So it was it was clear that there was you know the internet users had something unique over them. Yeah. Well, it could be that they were adapted to it, maybe. Perhaps. Well, it, it's. It's a six-person study. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, interesting. it's interesting what can relate to And then what he did is um, he then told the novice users to actually go out for the next week and an hour per day actually browse the internet. And when he re-scanned and retested them again, um, the novice users had, had actually the same brain activity as the experienced internet users. Cool. So they the brain had been rewired in some sense to be like the internet. Users. Yeah, yeah. They'd, they'd, they'd learn how to do it. And then he said he tested 18 more volunteers and got the same results. That's awesome. And then uh, this article, what it really is, <laughs> what it really spurred on, it goes on further and further. It goes on to talk about how the internet is really, it's, it is really changing our minds and how we seek information because there is so much information out there that we just really can't um, dissect it and actually pull it all in. 
Oh, our, our biological brains are not suited to this much information. We're suited to hunter-gatherer lifestyles where we just, you know, go out and pick berries, do some hunting, have some sex, sleep, and die. That's... <laughs> good life. That's all we're suited for. <laughs> we haven't changed. Not really. It's only society that's changed. But it was saying, like, uh, it goes on to say, like, you know, back in the 1980s, they thought hypertext and all this internet stuff coming in would actually be great for education. But, you know, it... Because they thought that, you know, you saw a link and you'd go to it and you'd find a different uh, point of view. Yeah, 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 point of view and that, just keep on going. And you'd find all this stuff and you'd work out what was actually legit and what wasn't. But, I mean, it, it doesn't. It disrupts concentration, they say, and it weakens comprehension. Because <laughs> you're saying, like, the one thing when you actually come across a link is a hyperlink in any sort of text. You have to decide, your brain has to decide, do I click this or not? And that's the disruption to what you're actually reading. And then they'll say, like, you know, there's so many other distractions on the internet now, like, you know, Automatic emails, Twitter messages coming in, even just like pictures and video content surrounding all it's this It's nowhere stuff. like yeah. reading a book, even though most of our time on the net is reading something. It's just, with a book, you're just reading that. Yeah, you're focused on this one yeah. thing. Or, or an article, like in a newspaper, you're just yeah. focused on one thing. Whereas yeah. with the internet, there's so much more things you get to be doing. I guess it's opportunity cost. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. yeah. Um, Holy crap. And the other thing they're saying is... Um, it, it, you also have this thing called switching costs, so that every time you shift your attention, the brain has to reorient it, uh, reorient it, reorient it, <laughs> reorient, <laughs> reorientate, reorient itself, which taxes our mental resources. <laughs> so, um, for even simple things like when you change websites, they have a different uh, style. They might have different fonts, different font styles, um, sizes, whatever. Crap. Yeah. And your brain has to go, oh my god, what am I looking at? Like, what is this? Like, it takes it, a while to yeah to readjust. readjust. Well, you see that all the time, like when you're visiting bad websites or mm. something, or if you get pissed off after a while, that you just give up after a bit. It's just yeah, whatever. Like, oh come on, <laughs> I can get this other information some other way. Yeah. But yeah, go read that article. But um, what I want to talk about is like. Like, how, how do you browse, browse the internet at the moment? What's uh, your... I don't know, I, I, I go to one main website, usually Reddit or usually one of the other aggregators, yeah. and then I go to an article, and then if that article's pretty interesting, then I'll go to another one and stuff. But most of the time, I don't read too many. Yeah, so we were having this discussion, discussion before, and I was saying yeah. that I tend to actually like videos and pictures way more than articles. Like, this article is really long, and I actually, if I wasn't doing this show, and if I didn't have to actually know about it, I would have read the first paragraph and just would have been like, well, we're like, cool, yeah. I get it, you know, kind of, but actually reading through it, it was quite amazing to actually learn all the different stuff that they're yeah. telling me about. It's, well, says I'm, I'm different, like, I, well, I, I'm, I'm the same to that, that I don't really read much articles and all that, but I, I don't use video too much on the web. Oh, dude, I love video, like, I, I, I crave I it. Yeah, I, I, I don't like video because it takes my attention away from things. Like, even, like, you shared stuff with me on Facebook or other people have, and it's like, oh, that's a chore. So I was like, okay, I'll watch it. Yeah. Then a lot of the time that, yeah, I, I have it playing, but my mind wanders and stuff. So a lot of the time, I guess, I think the main problem could be that I generally have my screen split up just like it is right now. I've got two websites, and on one yeah. side, I usually have maybe, like, a TV show playing or, like, whatever series I'm watching at the moment while I'm browsing the web. So what do you focus on, though? Like, do you actually get anything from the show? Sure, it's, it's kind of what background noise, really, that, I mean, like, if yeah. there's a funny joke, I'm like, oh, that's cool, or if, just say I finished um, reading a website, I'll, like, focus on that for a bit until I get bored, and then I'll go back onto here and browse something until I'm interested, and I'll go back, and then it's like, oh, that's cool, and then I'll go back. And yeah. It's weird. It's really, like, actually thinking about it now and analysing it. So I think it is really fucking with our heads. Like, I must have a, like... I think I've learned a hell of a lot more from the internet. We, we're a lot more knowledgeable because of Oh, that. I think so, without question. Like, I, again, we said before that I think we've learned more from the internet than we have from the education system. Yeah. Oh, yeah.